Okay, and finally part three to the vector space lecture is uh, first we're going to look at some examples of sets that are not vector spaces, things you might think would be but aren't, and then some properties of vector spaces, and then we're going to create a strange notion of addition and multiplication and see how some of the axioms uh, might still hold. First up is the set of all second degree polynomials. You might say, wait, you just did that and showed all 10 axioms. The difference here is that um, before it was labeled as P2, and P2 is, is the set of all second degree polynomials. Not exactly, though. It was the set of all polynomials of degree 2 or lower. And so that's a difference. Less than or equal to 2, or this is actually equal to 2. So this is the set of all second degree polynomials. Okay, it must be a second. So this is degree equal to 2. And something changes when you do that. Let's take a look at it. The guy, the one of, there's, as long as you have one axiom that fails, then you don't have a vector space. And the very first one, fails if you take two degree two polynomials here's an example of two of them and you add them together it's possible that you could not end up with a degree two polynomial if your coefficients are opposites then when you add them together you're going to end up with losing that second degree um, term and so therefore this set it doesn't really have a name but the We'll just label it as the set of all second degree polynomials. If you uh, add them, you end up, it's possible that you could end up not having a second degree polynomial. You end up leaving that set. And so for that reason, then, this guy is not a second degree polynomial, for example, here. And so this cannot be a vector space. Okay, P2, by saying not equal to, but saying less than or equal to, you're able to get a vector space, but saying equal to, no vector space. Okay. Uh, here's a second example. Um, the symbol is uh, Z with a double bar, and it stands for the set of integers. Remember what those are? This is um, it's an infinite set. It goes on forever in all directions, but it's our set of integers where we have the positive and negative whole numbers and uh, zero and the question is well so will that satisfy all ten and the one um, so remember with each of these sets these are the V's but remember there's also the F which is the set of real numbers in general it doesn't have to be so when I say um, when I say Z I mean Z being what we what we what we grab the quote vectors from and so is it possible that where we grab the vectors from, in addition to having the real numbers as your scalars, is it possible to one of the ten axioms to fail? Okay, and it is. Um, this one is the first scalar multiplication axiom. You won't be closed under scalar multiplication. Remember, your scalars are real numbers and your vectors are integers. So, for example, I could take the real number one half and the integer negative three. I can scale that, but when I do it, I leave the set of integers. I'm no longer an integer. Negative 3 half is not an integer. And so you, you can't do that. You need to be closed. When you scale your, your vector, you need to still be inside of that set. You can't leave the set like this is doing. And so for, these are two examples where uh, one is failure because of closure under addition. Another is failure because of closer under scalar multiplication. And so those are uh, two examples of things you might think would be vector spaces but aren't. Okay. Uh, next up are some properties of vector spaces. First up is that the zero vector is unique. That's the, the air quote zero. Remember what we call that guy? That's the additive identity. The additive identity is unique. You can't have two of these guys. 
you can't have two guys that you add to any random vector to get that random vector back. It needs to be a single unique um, element of your set. And then when it comes to scaling your vector by the scalar zero, this is your um, taking zero times any vector will give you the zero vector. Okay, when you grab your scalar zero as your real number, when you scale any random vector in your set, you need to get what's called the zero vector, that, 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 that additive identity. Third property, if you try to scale the zero vector, if you try to scale the additive identity, no matter what the scalar is, you should still have that additive identity. You should still have the zero vector. Nothing can scale you away from being the additive identity. Um, the additive inverse is unique. This is the guy uh, that we called, um, if we have V, then minus V is your additive inverse. That gets you to that unique additive identity. And so you can't have two guys out there that, that you can add a random vector to and have them both give you the zero vector. It must only be a single unique guy. If you take any vector and scale by negative one, that actually is the additive identity. This symbol here is additive inverse, sorry. This symbol is additive inverse. And so taking negative one, scaling a vector by negative one, you get the additive identity for all vectors. Uh, additive inverse, I'm sorry. I keep mixing the words up. So um, the way to get the additive inverse is by scaling by negative one. All right, and then finally, if you have a vector v from your set, a scalar k from your set f, this vector v and f, they, um, the set v and f to define the vector space with the addition and subtraction, uh, addition and scalar multiplication um, defined. If, if it's the case that when you scale that vector and end up with the zero vector, it must be true that either the scalar is zero or the vector is zero. There's no way to take a scalar and a vector that aren't either one of them zero and end up with the zero vector. One of them have to be zero. Either the scalar is zero or the vector is zero already. Those are six properties that, that hold. And now finally we're going to end with looking at a strange definition of uh, vector space and, uh, and the addition and Scalar multiplication is what makes it strange. So we're going to have our vector space be the real positive numbers. So, so positive and real. Okay. So that would be um, not zero, but anything on the right-hand side of the real line. Positive and real. Okay. And then our, ve our, our um, field of scalars are going to be the real numbers again still. And then we're going to go with a very non-standard way of adding. Okay, so non-standard, I'm going to write a, a non-standard plus symbol. Okay, so just to emphasize that this is strange addition. Okay, strange how when I add two vectors, when I add two real positive numbers, the operation of add is going to be defined to be our normal idea of multiplication. Okay. So you can define addition and multiplication, uh, scalar multiplication to be anything you want them to be. They don't have to be your standard adding and scalar multiplying. And so we're going to have these non-standard ways here where adding is multiplying. Okay, so give me any two random guys that are real and positive, And the addition operation is defined to be multiplying. The scalar multiplication operation is defined to be um, taking x to the k, so it's ex exponential. Taking the, the the vector x or the real positive number x and raising it to the real scalar. Okay, and so this is a strange definition, but we're going to show that um, 
there's some of the axioms that hold. Okay. We're going to show closure under addition. This here, right? If I take two of them and I get a guy back that's in that same set V, then that's closed under addition. Well, if you take a real positive number and multiply it by a real positive number, what you get out is a real positive number. You don't leave that set by adding, although you're adding is multiply. Okay, so so you're closed under addition. What about scalar multiplication? What if I take any random real number and I scale? Will I always end up with a real positive number? Great question. It's not your standard scale or multiplication, though. It's not like uh, you should think, no, maybe this shouldn't work if I multiply by any negative. Like this, this allows for negative real numbers, the, the, um, the scalars to be negative. So what does that mean? So will I still always end up with a positive real number? It's because it's exponents. And so any real positive number, 7, for example, and I raise it to any real number. It doesn't have to be positive. So 7 to the 3, that's definitely real and positive. Okay. 7 to the 0 is real and positive. Okay, even 7 to the negative 2 is real and positive. It's 1 over 49. So, you don't get to leave the world of real positive numbers with this strange definition of scalar multiplication. Okay, so we've shown these two. They're not really too interesting. What's more interesting is to look at trying to find the additive inverse and the additive identity and the multiplicative identity, trying to find these guys with this strange notion of addition being multiplication and scalar multiplication being exponent. All right, so, well, how does this work? We're looking for the additive identity first, and then we'll find the inverse, additive inverse. So what is, it, what is the additive identity? It's the guy who you add to any random vector to get that vector back. And so, I'll just put a block. Block plus x equals x back. What does block have to be? But this isn't our standard plus. Okay, this isn't our standard zero. Okay, what? because addition isn't standard. Addition is multiplication. And so what you're looking for is block times x. We want that to give us x back. So when we say zero, it's not actually a zero in this strange idea of addition. Your your zero is what you would think of as one, and so one is your zero. <laughs> the additive identity is one, not zero. When it comes to the additive inverse, they're paired together, and so whatever you get for your additive identity, that's what you want to get to to find your additive inverse. I'm trying to use another symbol, triangle. I'm looking for a guy who I add to any random variable, but I don't get the zero number. I don't get the number zero. I get the additive identity back. So what plus x will give me one? Because remember, one is our additive identity. But remember, the plus is strange plus. The plus is multiplication. And so what times x gives you one? So it's going to be the fact that this guy that we're looking for is the reciprocal of x. It's, it still will be in the, in the world of real positive numbers. Any, any, any real positive numbers, reciprocal is still real and positive. And so we have the fact that um, 1 over x is the additive identity. Okay. All right, great. And then finally, we have the multiplicative identities. What number do you scalar multiply by to get the vector back? But remember, scalar multiply is raising to an exponent. So what do you raise x to to get x back? And that answer is going to be 1 again. And, and so... That's what we would think. Normally, 1 is your multiplicative identity. Normal, normally, 0 is your additive identity. 
uh, here, one is both the additive identity and one is the multiplicative identity. Okay, all right, so this ends lecture five. We've looked at what a vector space is, defined all 10 axioms. We looked at some examples of vector spaces. We then looked at some, uh, we went through all 10 axioms for one of those examples. And then finally, in this last video here, we looked at some examples of things that aren't vector spaces, sets that aren't vector spaces, and some properties of vector spaces, and then some kind of a strange things that could happen when you change up your idea of addition and scalar multiplication. All right, thank you.